Let's talk about mixed use. So I have, there was a comment. You see the comment recently about yeah, for Ho'opili? Yeah. So we do a lot of business in Ho'opili. In fact, we closed the flex unit recently. They're going to use the bottom half for commercial reasons. So what is a flex unit? So in Ho'opili, so you have this, this townhome. Upstairs is living. Downstairs could be living, could be a business. There's also a neighborhood called Mehana in Kapolei where they do this. Um, it's kind of like Hawaii's modern suburb take trying to be like a Brooklyn or like a downtown-y kind of vibe. So you have like the shave ice place, the bento place, the nail salon, the haircut, the doctor, the optometrist. You have these businesses that run below a living space and they lead to the, to the common street. It's actually pretty cool. The way the state sees it is highest and best use. What's the highest and best use of that property? So Let's say, for example, you have a CrossFit gym downstairs, a mechanic shop, or you have all these businesses and you have like one apartment upstairs. Well, the way they see it is you don't get to say, this is a residential asset, tax me at the low rate. They see it as, no, 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 the highest and best use for this is commercial, which we tax you at a higher rate. The commercial property tax rate in 2022, the time we're making this video, $12.50 for every thousand dollars of assessed value. So in these flex units that are worth about a million dollars right now, they're, they're not property tax assessed at a million, but let's just use a million. The way the math goes is a million dollars divided by a thousand is a thousand times $12.50, $12,500. So $12,500 in annual taxes for your home. So you bought this home and you're like, oh, it would be so cool to run a daycare downstairs or to sell shave ice. I'm going to start a shave ice business, a lemonade stand with my son, and we're going to run it out of the bottom, and we're going to have a, I'm going to teach him how to start an LLC, have an EIN number, whatever the case may be. We're going to do all that and have this cute lemonade stand, and we'll make 10, 15 grand on the year. It's no big deal. It's more of a thing for my son, and we're just going to use the downstairs for that. Well, did you know that if you're using it for that, the tax rate is, is significantly more and may make it prohibitive to run your low profit business that's more of a hobby. A lot of people don't know this. So I hope that this finds at least one person who's in that situation who owns a Ho'opili or Mehana Flex unit, or maybe something like Kaimuki or one of these other areas that might have a mixed use property. Here's another thing. Maybe you're thinking like me, well, why don't they take square footage? So like, if it's like 2000 square foot, and a thousand of it's commercial and a thousand of it's residential and it's it's one address you know it's like a mixed use townhome why don't they charge half at one rate and half at the other all i can say is that would make too much sense and we're dealing with bureaucrats i think that's how it should be at a minimum if not just leave the whole thing residential because it's there's no one really running like a a, a damn bank. They're, they're not running Goldman Sachs out of Ho'opili. The way the state sees it is highest and best use. So if you are going to buy one of those flex units and run your business out of it, especially if you're going to receive customers and stuff, you're going to have foot traffic. They're going to see that as commercial use. And you're going to pay $12.50 per thousand instead of $3.50 per thousand. So really, really important. Not too many people are going to be on our channel or on our Instagram who are looking to buy commercial buildings for commercial use. Now, if you are, I'd love to chat with you because we're similar minded and I love business and real estate. Most of the people here are buying residential. So worst case, you're buying one of these mixed units. In Ho'opili, these things were initially labeled as commercial. So although it's a flex unit, but we're using the downstairs for grandma, you know, for tutu, for obachan, whatever. And it's mixed generation living, multi-generation living they were just charging it at the commercial rate because no one had really thought about it. There's these commercial mixed use assets that are commercial and residential. People were buying them and getting this, you know, 12,000, 10,000, whatever it was assessed for at the time, tax bill. And they're like, yo, what is this? Well, what they've done now is when you purchase uh, Ho'opili through DR Horton, you can work through DR Horton to declare it as a residential property. You say, hey, I'm not, I'm not running any businesses. Yeah, like I'll go down there and use my laptop and like telework. From, but no, I'm not. I wouldn't say that. I won't say anything. <laughs> but I'm not running any business out of this thing. It's just a residential asset. So, and I listened to Derek. I listened to Core Team Hawaii, and I filed my home exemption form on top of that. 
So I'm getting taxed at the lowest of the lowest rate. No commercial business happening here. One more thing about the, the flex units or mixed, mixed commercial and residential use units or homes or assets. If you feel that, hey, my the highest and best use for this thing is residential. I don't run a business downstairs. There is a residential use dedication form that you can fill out. The deadline for that is September 1st of each year. So it's literally passed for this year. But if you own a Ho'opili Flex, if you own a Mehana Flex, and you've been getting taxed too much, um, fill out the home exemption form and fill out the residential use dedication form, uh, which we'll also link in the show notes. <laughs> my, my pigeon notes, I put get penalties. <laughs> so there are, <laughs> if you're using it for commercial, um, using your mixed use unit for commercial and you haven't declared it, there are penalties involved. There is an appeal period and that this appeal period does not, does not, listen to me closely, this does not apply to people that want to say, um, I forgot to fill out my home exemption form or I bought my home in November and I wasn't able to file the form by September. This is not for that. But if you feel that the value of your home was not assessed appropriately, you can appeal that between December 15th and January 15th of each year. Some people, believe it or not, will even appeal to get their home uh, assessed at a higher value. And you're like, why the hell would you want to do that? But um, there are a few reasons. One is ego. You know, if I live in the Okahashi estate, I want to, I want to see that it's worth $5 million or whatever, right? That's one reason. Another reason is sometimes people, you know, there's certain depreciation and tax advantages based off of the value of a home. And so if you get your tax assessed value up and then you move out of it and do a cost segregation and you're a real estate professional, maybe you get tax advantages. I don't know. But there are appeal periods. Uh, there is an appeal period, December 15th to January 15th, regarding the, the tax assessed value of your home. One bill that's up for proposal or is being proposed, I should say, Bill 4. So Bill 4 would create a TVU class and a certain property tax tier for a TVU. So what is a TVU? A transient vacation unit as defined in Bill 41. Bill 41 is this thing that changed Airbnb and short-term rentaling on the island of Oahu. Transient vacation units are units of which can be rented for up to 30 days. I should say no less than 29 nights at a time. Parts of Waikiki where you can do really short-term renting, that's probably gonna be taxed at a different rate than say in Ko'olina, where there are communities where you can still do 29 night rentals. They're gonna create classes for these things and tax these assets at a different rate. So already, if you don't live in a unit, if you don't live in a home, it's taxed at a dollar more per thousand of assessed value. What I wonder is how steep are they, how much are they going to charge investors who own, you know, resort investments, a townhome in Ko'olina, a condo in Waikiki that use it for Airbnb, use it for VRBO. How much more are they going to charge them? Are they going to charge them the commercial rate at $12.50 per thousand? That could be pretty crippling like when i know this information and i know it's going to come and it's going to get passed i may be looking to sell because i i just bought one actually i may be looking to sell before that happens because if now if i'm assessed at say a million dollars and now i'm going to be taxed at twelve dollars and fifty cents instead of three dollars and fifty cents per thousand the delta on that is what uh, nine thousand a year I mean, if you're, if you're totally paid off in the Kotalina area, that could be like a full month. That could be one twelfth of your annual cash flow committed to property taxes, whereas before it wasn't that great. So bill four, for those people looking to do Airbnbs in Hawaii, um, if you have a transient vacation unit, so you file to get you know this tax number associated with TVUs, which you have to have, or they're going to bust you. So you have to file for it, then you get it, they're going to tax you at a higher rate if and when bill four passes. We'll do another video if we get any updates on that. I hate it because I own one. So how does bill four affect part-time owners? Now I'm gonna talk about bill nine next and that's really for part-time owners. If a part-time owner isn't doing TVU kind things, <laughs> you know, if it isn't doing TVU stuff and isn't a TVU, so say you own this and, but you don't file to do 30 days at a time, 29 nights. You're not a TVU. 
you just you rent it for four months at a time because that's within Hawaii's law, Bill 41. You're not a TVU, therefore you wouldn't get taxed at the higher rate. So maybe it makes sense for you. Maybe I'd have to do the math. It'd be a whole thing, but maybe it makes sense for you to do 90 day rentals to traveling nurses and corporations to keep your property tax lower versus doing 30 day rentals to vacationers and paying more. Maybe hopefully the 30 day rental is so much more profitable. It's not, it doesn't negate the, you know, the advantage of having an Airbnb, but it, it could, it could be different for each person and how they cash flow their property. So if you're going to buy a place in Hawaii and only keep it part time, but you wanted to do one that you could Airbnb, you may pay more property taxes in the future as a result. Then there's Bill 9. Bill 9 is an empty home surcharge tax. What Bill 9 currently says is that if you own a house in Hawaii and you occupy it for less than 180 days out of the year, there's going to be a 3% assessment annually. So this is proposed right now and it's blocked. I know some people with some... uh, connections who say it's never going to pass. And there's obviously some important people who want it to pass because they're trying to push it through. So who knows? So let me put that into some numbers for you. You own something that's worth a million. It's tax assessed at a million dollars. I live in California. I live in Ohio, whatever the case may be, but I'm 50 and I want to return home to Hawaii and retire in Hawaii. And we use it and we don't even rent it because you know, we come on three months, we let some other people use it, but that does not total 180 days. So if it's vacant for 180 days or more, according to Bill 9, they're going to charge you a $30,000 assessment from the state property tax division, $30,000 the next year. And so if that bill were to pass, there's going to be some people that own assets in Hawaii that say, I'm selling. So For example, the condo market in town, which already doesn't appreciate uh, the same rate as a single family market, et cetera. The condo market will suffer if this happens. So the person I met with said, how many, you know, how many vacant homes do you think there are in Hawaii? And I was like, I don't know, not that many. You know, like I, we're showing homes, selling homes. We do this all the time. And the person said, there's been reports that 10% of the homes in Hawaii are vacant. Would you think that's believable? And I was like, no way. I don't, I don't walk around neighborhoods and one out of every 10 is vacant. That's not the case. But then I said, well, what about resorts? What about condos? What about town? What about these buildings? You ever thought about those? And no, I bet you in town, there's probably buildings where more than half are vacant. There's 256,000 homes in Hawaii. So they're telling me 25,000 of them are vacant. Here's another stat for you. Of the 256,000 homes in Hawaii, 149,000 of them currently have home exemption or property tax exemption forms filed. We know that there are some people paying a higher tax rate for no reason, and that's the reason for this video. Taxes are taxes. At some point, I'm okay with them. For the most part, I don't want you paying a dollar more than you need to. Let's take that money and let's invest it in something else. Or maybe let's have a nice dinner or take care of yourself. Bill 9 could be detrimental to non-owner occupants who are offshore and don't use the home. Here's the other thing it would be detrimental for. Kurt, the bartender. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He he didn't want to rent his home because he's like, you know, I bought this home to make my mom proud. My mom passed. She always wanted something like this. I moved in with my dad after my mom passed. And so for the most part, I barely lived in my place. It just sits vacant, but I don't want anyone to mess it up. I'm going to move there one day, but I don't want it getting messed up. Now, I was able to talk him into monetizing this asset and cash flowing it. So now no problem for him because he's renting it. However, there was a point at which it just set vacant. And if this Bill 9 were in effect, he would get a $12,000 bill the next year for letting his house sit vacant. Now, some of the problems with this is how do you prove that a home was vacant? You can't hire enough spies to like see if you're going in and out and sleeping Say, well, what about utilities? Well, yeah, they can pull utility records, but then you incentivize people to just go let water run and not damage homes. Like we've tried to make a political video before. I wasn't able to walk the tightrope. Where I come from is I know a handful of things in life. I know jujitsu, surfing, real estate, investing. I'm not an expert on everything, but the things I am an expert on, I do have opinions on. And so this Bill 9, where it comes from, is Hawaii, Hawaii is a place where local people have a hard time making and staying here. It's so expensive, 
but your average Joe has a hard time affording this island. Like you, you really have to grow and hustle and grind and be, become a really high earner to live here. To live middle class here is the upper echelon of the world and, and what the world's ever seen, right? So I wake up so grateful every day. And there's a number of people that are impoverished or living with family. We have so, so much multi-generational living here, yet you have 10% of homes sitting vacant. That really bothers some people. And I get it. And so Bill 9 is an effort to combat that and bring those homes back on the market, which inevitably would affect Hawaii you know, home prices, especially condo prices in a negative way. So, so then let's go to the other side. Well, now you're going to damage the homeowners who do own condos and their assessed value is going to go down. And the, the market value, more importantly, is going to go way down. The people that maybe own way out in the country in Mokulia and then also own a condo in Kaka'ako, they're going to like be forced to a studio in Kaka'ako. They're going to be forced to technically live half one place, half the other. That's not what they bought it for. The grandma and the grandpa who are 88 years old and own an extra house that they're going to leave to their kids, they don't want to rent it out. They don't understand how. They, they, it's just a legacy. They're going to be forced to either sell it now or put someone in it now and, and have them rent it, which I get it. You know, So the other side saying, well, that's a great thing. Now someone has a home, and, and I understand that too. But maybe they're not good landlords. Maybe they're not fit to be landlords. It's, it's a complex conversation. I'm sure I'm going to start a war in the comments. Let me recap real quick. Bill 4 will create a property tax class for TVUs, transient vacation units, Airbnbs. Bill 9 is an empty home surcharge tax that if your home were vacant for more than 180 days, you would get a 3% assessment the following year. So on a million dollar asset, you get $30,000 bill from the state of Hawaii saying, here, you owe us 30 grand because you let your home sit vacant pretty much making it prohibitive to own places that you let sip empty. And that's a hot topic. And with that, I'm out. Hey guys, real quick, Mahi Kahale here with Core Team Hawaii. If you are curious about what your home may be worth in today's market, we've got you covered. You can get a free home valuation at myhawaiihomevalue.com. If you're interested, please check out the website. We'd love to help you. Yeah, Mahi, that, that's, that's a... It's a dense one. It's a dense but, one. But it's going to be super valuable for whoever needs it. Who needs it. it.